All right, welcome everybody. It's now my pleasure to introduce Long Beach City College Executive Vice President, Anne-Marie Gable. Let's hear it for Anne-Marie. Good afternoon. I want to start the day by introducing the distinguished elected officials who are with us today. When I call your name, if you would please stand and then remain standing until the end, and then we will acknowledge everyone as a group. So please hold your applause until the end. So first off, we have our own Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees. We have President Jeffrey Kellogg, <laughs> Vice President Sunny Zia, Trustee Jenny Baxter, Trustee Vivian Malaulu, and Trustee Doug Otto. From the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, we have Supervisor Janice Hahn. From the City of Long Beach, we have Mayor Robert Garcia. Vice Mayor Rex Richardson. Council Member Al Austin. Council Member Stacy Mungo. City Prosecutor Doug Hobart. Halbert, I'm sorry. <laughs> City Attorney Charlie Parkin. And City Auditor Laura Dowd. From the City of Lakewood, we have Mayor Diane Dubois and Council Member Jeff Wood. From the City of Signal Hill, Council Member Larry Forrester. And from the City of Avalon, Mayor Annie Marshall. From the Long Beach Unified School District Board of Trustees, President Megan Kerr, <laughs> Vice President Diana Craighead, and Board Member John Meyer, and Board Member Felton Williams. From Keppel Union School District, Board Member Matthew Gaines, It's also my pleasure to welcome a couple of our LBCC personnel commissioners. We have Dick Gaylord and Uduak Joe Intuck. We have several of our current and former Citizens Oversight Committee members that I want to acknowledge. So we have uh, Dina Berg, Sharon Diggs Jackson, Lexi Donovan. Randy Gordon, all right, I don't see any of you folks standing up. Okay, there, Sharon's standing up, thank you, Sharon. <laughs> John Gotts, Joan Greenwood, Aaron Moore, Elaine McDaniel, Barry McDaniel, David C., and Stella Ursua. Thank you very much for your time on the Citizens Oversight Committee. From the Long Beach Port, we have Commissioner Luann Bynum with us today. We also have several representatives from the offices of federal, state, and local officials. So we have representatives from Congressman Alan Lowenthal, Congressman Linda Sanchez, State Senator Bill Ben Allen, State Senator Ricardo Lara, State Senator Janet Wynn, Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon, Assembly Member Pat O'Donnell. I already said, okay. Long Beach Council Member Lena Gonzalez. <laughs> And then a couple education leaders in the house. So we have uh, Bellflower Unified Assistant Superintendent Lisa Azevedo. 
And last but not least, we have our very own Long Beach Unified School District Superintendent, Chris Steinhauser. Now it's my honor to welcome and acknowledge the sponsors of today's State of the College, the President's Partners for Promise. Again, please hold your applause until the end and we will recognize them as a group. Our Pearl Partners, Americana Antique Market, Bess Hodges Foundation, Cordoba Corporation, Earl and Lorraine Miller Foundation, Thank you. Our Opal partners, AT&T, Burnham Benefits, County of Los Angeles, GRD, Keenan & Associates, Nautilus International, The Port of Long Beach, RBC Capital Markets, Dr. and Mrs. Mike Walter, thank you very much for your support. I also want to thank you for your dedication to Long Beach City College. So to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this afternoon, please welcome Associate Student Body President Javier Salcido. Uh, please stand. Thank you. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Javier. Next, we are very pleased to welcome one of our LBCC music students, classical voice major Tess Rose, to sing the national anthem. Please rise. and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Wow, that was fabulous. Thank you very much, Tess. At this time, I invite you to begin your lunch, and we'll be back on stage in just a few minutes. So enjoy. Okay. All right, everyone, if I could have your attention, please. We are going to start the second half of this program with a very special presentation. So if you can join me in welcoming Liz McCann from the Long Beach City College Foundation to make that presentation. Liz? 
Thank you, John. Good afternoon. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here today with all of you for our 2018 State of the College Address. It is my honor to invite the Long Beach Rotary Club to be recognized for their longtime commitment to and support of Long Beach City College. <laughs> Rotary's support to Long Beach City College spans the entire nine decades that LBCC has been here in our community. I am proud of this partnership and even more proud to be a member of this wonderful organization. So I would like to thank um, our Rotary Scholarship Foundation President, Jane Netherton. and our LBCC Chair, Don Cochran, and the Executive Director of the Foundation, Letty Toda. And we'd like to invite all of the Rotarians who are here today to come up for this special presentation of the scholarship gift to the college. All right, folks, let's hear it for the Rotary and for the Long Beach City College Foundation. Thank you so much, Rotarians. I'm delighted to introduce the president of the Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees, Mr. Jeff Kellogg, who's serving his fourth term as an LBCC trustee and his unprecedented fifth term as board president. Jeff is a Viking Hall of Fame honoree LBCC alumnus and a former three-term Long Beach City Council member who served two consecutive terms as vice mayor. He was also the youngest member to serve on the City Council until Robert Garcia, that is. <laughs> he works for Moss Companies where he's worked with over 25 other California community colleges over the past 10 years on educational master planning. He also asked me to say that he's the most fit and fashionable board member. <laughs> Help me welcome my colleague and board president, Jeff Kellogg, to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, members of the college community and friends. As the board president, it is again my privilege to share some thoughts about what lies ahead, acknowledge some successes, and express our appreciation on behalf of my fellow trustees. I have stood here previously during good, bad, difficult, and controversial times, sometimes occurring all on the same day. <laughs> but regardless of the circumstances, everyone could always depend on Long Beach City College continuing to do what it's been doing for the past 90 years, offering a quality and affordable education provided by outstanding faculty and staff. When I was first elected to the board, I realized the college had not changed much from the days when I was a student. You can now see the physical changes wherever you look with all of our new and remodeled buildings and landscaping. The culture has also changed, and I can give no better explanation or example of this than the transformation that was provided by Cindy Enrique when she sat at a recent foundation event. She is a math professor who was hired a few years ago and demonstrates to me the energy and attitude that really represent our college today. She was disturbed about how poorly her students were doing in her math classes, but also the belief expressed by some that it is what it is, not much you can do about it. She did not accept that attitude, and she personally did things to understand, energize, and support her students so they could become successful and feel good about themselves. Cindy is an example of why I am so proud of the people that work here.
Today is also special because it is our superintendent president's first State of the College address. No pressure. <laughs> so I will keep my comments relatively brief. Besides, most people never complain to me about having a shorter speech. But I would like to remind everyone about the history of our college leadership. The average tenure for California Community College CEOs is approximately three years. In comparison, Long Beach City College has had only two superintendent presidents over the past 20 years. And it is my hope, and I'm sure it's Reagan's as well, no pressure, to continue that trend of long-term leadership here at the college. So, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to acknowledge and thank our administrators, faculty, both full-time and part-time, and our classified staff for their outstanding contribution to the college and our students, because without your dedication and hard work, Long Beach City College would not be the institution it is today. We should be proud of what Long Beach City College stands for and what this college means to our community. We may be one of 114 community colleges in California, but we are truly unique because of the innovative ideas that started right here. For clarification, I'm referring to the college and not the gym. The college promise began over a decade ago and is now copied by colleges as a model for improving student success. We began offering a tuition-free first semester to incoming freshmen, then increased it to a second semester, and now we have the possibility of doubling it to four semesters. A more efficient and... A more efficient and fair process for evaluating placing students in appropriate classes which will allow them to complete their education within a shorter timeline began at Long Beach City College. The generosity of local donors through our Long Beach City College Foundation, thank you Liz McCann and everybody involved with the foundation who have made it possible to provide over one million dollars in scholarships to our students annually. And our students who complete the College Promise program are guaranteed a place at a Cal State University during a time when thousands of qualified applicants this past year did not get placed at a CSU campus. So innovative ideas do not stop with our transfer students. Even though we are recently honored for being one of the top transfer colleges around, our growing vocational programs along with our economic and community development efforts are providing students with greater job and career opportunities than ever before. Cybersecurity, for example, is now part of our curriculum, providing another promising career path for our students. And that is only one example, remember shorter speech, on how we are staying at the forefront in the new economy and changing workforce. Besides innovation and creativity, we also do extremely well in the areas of bricks and mortar. Whether it was recently remodeled building for our outstanding nursing program, or the recently dedicated electrical technology building and learning centers, our thanks, and this is the last time I get to say before she leaves for her new job, Executive Vice President Anne-Marie Gable and her entire team, and George Plaw and everyone at Cordoba Corporation for their continuing success over the years in upgrading, modernizing, and improving our campuses. They look fantastic. The buildings look fantastic, but Emory and George, you look fantastic too. So, I sometimes do think, though, the CC and LBCC does stand for continuous construction, but that's a good thing. <laughs> I also need to thank our area residents for their support in passing the bond measure that makes this all possible and assure them that your tax dollars will continue to be spent on what was promised and never wasted. But it is our people that truly make this place special and I would like to thank a few in particular on behalf of the board. Jeff Wheeler and Jennifer Holmgren for their effort in leading the midterm accreditation report. Great job. <laughs> the Enrollment Management Committee led by Paul Creason, Luis Gutierrez, Kathy Scott, Jennifer Holmgren, again, for their work with the Enrollment Management Plan. Thank you.
Vice President of Human Resources, Rose Delgadio, Jean Duran, and everyone involved from all sides, and there were a lot of you, for the successful conclusion of all labor negotiations. It should be noted that this is one of the first State of the College events that I can remember where all the labor negotiations have been completed, which is something to celebrate or give a big sigh of relief. But congratulations. Long Beach City College athletic teams were again successful winning conference championships, but nothing can compete with Misty May coaching the women's volleyball team to a championship and giving birth to twin girls. By the way, that was not at the same time, though. <laughs> I previously mentioned the potential of offering a second year of free tuition to our students. I also believe we should be doing everything possible in reducing the high cost of textbooks by offering more textbooks online and for free to our students because students should not have to make the difficult and unfair choice between buying a textbook or putting food on their table. Reducing the high cost of textbooks is doable, it is readily available, and I hope we can continue to pursue and build upon our efforts in making college education even more affordable. We've also read about recent events regarding inappropriate conduct towards individuals, especially women. No one should ever be put in a situation where they feel vulnerable, defenseless, and have no recourse. I've had a discussion with some of my board members and our superintendent president about developing a new policy above the current accreditation standards and send the strongest message possible that inappropriate behavior towards anyone at Long Beach City College will never be tolerated, ever. <clears throat> On a personal note, I'd be remiss and probably in trouble if I did not acknowledge somebody here today. It is not easy being an elected official. Ask anybody in this room. But it is never easy being the spouse of an elected official. Besides always being supportive, she runs her own business in Orange and San Diego County, as well as being a great role model and mom to Trevor and Rachel. So ladies and gentlemen, my wife, Pam. Yes, I know I got the better end of the deal, yes. Also, thank you to Lori Moss O'Keefe, president of Moss Companies, for allowing me the time to serve as a trustee and a board president. Our company's founder, by the way, my mentor, and Lori's father, the late Mike Moss, was a dean here at Long Beach City College when I was a student. And he once told me about getting my transcripts organized and sent off to the University of Oregon so I could participate in spring football. Even then, people at the college helping students above and beyond what is expected. Honestly, I think they just wanted to get me out of here as quickly as possible. So Lori and Moss and everyone at Moss, thank you so much. It, it has been my honor and privilege to be uh, represent an area where I was born and raised and a college that I once attended as a student and even being the senior member of the Board of Trustees. But by the way, that does mean longest serving member and not oldest member. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Many great things have happened and are continuing to happen here at Long Beach City College, and you are about to hear more about that from our superintendent president. No pressure, Reagan. Let's continue to put our students first. Let's continue to be innovative. Let's keep Long Beach City College the model and standard that other colleges strive to become. Thank you all for supporting this great college and making it such a special place where we help people help themselves through education. Finally, thank you all very much for your time and the opportunity for me to speak here today. Thank you all. Go Vikings. Is that okay? <laughs> okay, I had to give you a hug now. Thank you, Jeff. Our next speaker is a horticulture professor who is representing our faculty as the president of the Long Beach City College Academic Senate. Please welcome Jorge Ochoa. Thank you. 
It's a great honor for me to be here addressing this uh, very large crowd. And I'm going to begin by asking you all to think about something very important. Why is Long Beach City College the greatest community college? Now, I'm going to give you the answer later on, but for now, think about it. So why is Long Beach City College the greatest community college? I'll tell you. I've been associated with Long Beach City College for 22 years out of the 90. First, as a student. Any students here? Make noise. <laughs> then, as an adjunct faculty. Adjunct faculty, make noise. Thank you. And finally, as a full-time faculty and a member of the Academic Senate and the Senate President. Academic Senate, Pres uh, Academic Senate make noise. As a student, I will never forget my very first day exploring the college, rushing to sign up for classes, and the day that I put on the cap and gown uh, to walk the stage for graduation. As a faculty member, I will never forget my new faculty orientation, my first day of the fall semester, my first of many mistakes, and my first of many triumphs. I will never forget my first group of students or students through subsequent years. I will never forget the people of the college who greeted me, mentored me, John Downey's on the floor, acclimated me, and taught me what it meant to be a colleague at Long Beach City College. Colleagues at Long Beach City College, make some noise. <laughs> that is what Long Beach uh, City College means to me. I recently became curious as to what do the current students love about Long Beach City College? I walked around Long Beach City College asking students and the following are some of their answers. Updated facilities, beautiful campus, friendly and helpful staff, amazing caring professors, campus diversity, Students and faculty make me feel comfortable. Diverse and safe campus. Club activities. Passionate professors that are always trying to help. A few other things that Long Beach City College students love. Many opportunities provided to them. Help when needed. Best faculty and staff that is willing to help. Now, going a little further, I decided to ask the faculty, what do the faculty love about Long Beach City College? Their response, a tradition of helping students. The opportunity to teach students that live in the same community that I live in. The opportunity to affect change. To always find support from a teammate to help pursue passion or goals. A leadership team that supports instructional and faculty purview. A genuinely passionate people that work here. So today, I look across the floor and I see people who work hard, people who care, and people who keep students in the front and center of what we do. The faculty in our department that are writing new and innovative curriculum and formulating new certificates. Our faculty that are accompanying students to national competitions where students return as winners and champions. The faculty that are creating new student clubs, sponsoring clubs, and working with students that have declared their particular discipline as their major. Our faculty are involved and are dedicated to innovation in the classroom. So with students at our heart of what we do, we can begin move, uh, moving forward to create new innovations and accomplishments that we can recognize when the college celebrates 100 years. We are very lucky because some people never experienced to do what we do. 
We help carve students' path that leads them to successful in their professional endeavors and their lives. In helping students achieve their professional goals, we help shape the present, the future of our communities, our state, and even our nation. So one more time, why is Long Beach City College the greatest community college? I think the answer can be found by looking around you because every single person here is responsible for making Long Beach City College the greatest in the nation. And with that, I thank you. Great job, thank you, Jorge. It's now my honor to introduce you to our new bundle of energy, the 10th Superintendent President of Long Beach City College, Dr. Reagan Ramali. <laughs> Before joining LBCC last spring, Dr. Ramali served as the president of Harry S. Truman College in Chicago and held leadership roles at several community colleges, including Moreno Valley, Los Angeles City, Compton, and Santa Monica Colleges. Dr. Ramali holds a PhD in education from Walden University, a MBA from the University of San Diego, and a BA in English from Rutgers University. She also has served as an adjunct instructor of Southwestern Community College and National University. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Superintendent President, Dr. Reagan Ramali. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of our students, faculty, and staff, welcome to the 2018 State of the College Address. Thank you for being here today. I'd like to start by thanking our Board of Trustees for their leadership and stewardship of this college and for your support and confidence in me to lead this amazing institution. Jeff, did I hear 10 more years? <laughs> One of our trustees happens to be celebrating a birthday today. How about a big Viking cheer for Board Vice President Sonny Zia. Happy birthday, Trustee Zia. I would like to thank my executive team, Vice President of Human Resources, Rose Delgadio, <laughs> Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Kathy Scott, <laughs> and Vice President of Student Services, Dr. Kim McGinnis. Let's give them a hand. No, no, I did not forget Executive Vice President Anne Marie Gable. Anne-Marie, you have been a stellar chief financial officer for this college for more than a decade. She's going to soon be moving on to be a CFO for South Orange County Community College District. So I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge her here today. Anne-Marie, you will be missed. Your legacy will forever be a part of this campus. I believe we have some flowers for Anne Marie. Come on and give her a round of applause. Thank you to our sponsors and the Long Beach City College Foundation who make this event possible. To our faculty and staff, thank you for being here today to support today's event. Thank you to our union leaders, Janae Hund, Thomas Hamilton, Claudia Nguyen, Thank you to Senate leaders, Academic Senate President Jorge Ochoa and Annie Ingle, the president of the newly formed Classified Senate. Thank you to the State of the College Committee and to our media services team. And thank you to all the servicers, servers who brought us our lunch today. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you to our partner cities, 
in the Long Beach Community College District, Long Beach, Lakewood, Signal Hill, and Avalon. You are very important to us, and we look forward to building even stronger relationships throughout the neighborhoods and communities in our district. Finally, and most importantly, thank you to our students. You are our motivation and our inspiration to give our very best every day and to help you succeed in college and in life. Can we hear it for the students? Today we're going to do something a little bit different than past State of the College events. Are you ready? Okay. In celebration of the fact that we have a record turnout of faculty, staff, and administrators here today, we're going to, to make today even more powerful than a speech. We're going to create a classroom, a learning experience. We are, after all, a top-notch learning institution, right? All right. I didn't, I did not, that was not loud enough. <laughs> Today, I'm going to tell you about the incredible impact that LBCC has had on our community this past year and reveal an exciting new direction for our future. The work that we do has profound economic and societal impact. It reduces crime. It lowers poverty. It provides homes and economic prosperity. And it brings families together. It provides social mobility into and through and beyond the middle class. These are issues that we should all be able to agree on. Now more than ever, never has there been a time in history when our job has been more relevant and necessary. So today, as a learning experience for our students, I'm asking all of you to engage on social media. Ooh. On Tuesday, during the State of the Union address, teachers across the nation used this speech as an opportunity for instruction, learning, and debate. To that end, I want to spark a discussion and a debate today I want you to weigh in from your political point of view on the impacts that the strategies I'm talking about today will have on our community. The impact LBCC has on the economy, the impact LBCC has on society, and how our work changes lives. By seeing different perspectives and reactions to those impacts, we can provide a learning opportunity for our students. I believe it's critical that students understand that good policies can cut through politics for the benefit of everyone. <laughs> our country is so divided on so many issues right now. But education brings people together. We are uniquely primed and ready to help serve and solve some of society's pressing issues. Poverty, crime, homelessness. We have never been in a better position to solve these issues. And it is incumbent on us to try. So what do you think? Let's make this a classroom today. We have some of our professors who are live tweeting today's speech to students. And so we'll have students joining in the conversation. Now, Mayor Garcia, I'm counting on you as Long Beach's tweeter in chief <laughs> and number one Viking to join in the fun. And Supervisor Hahn, I know you love education and I know you love to tweet. So I want to hear from you too. So we're laying down the gauntlet. I know we have Republicans in the room, we've got Democrats in the room, and some who don't identify with either party. We want to hear from all of you. Let's take, make today a great learning experience. Let's generate a conversation that goes viral. Make sure to use the hashtag LBCCSOC to be a part of it. Okay. I think we can show how education is the one thing 
that crosses the political spectrum and bridges the divide. Whether you're Republican or Democrat, I think we can all agree that education changes lives, provides social mobility, and is uniquely a way to unify the United States of America today. It is incumbent upon us to be the middle ground, to be the pathway to social mobility and success, real success. And if you don't think LBCC is the place to be, I have a video for you that's gonna prove you wrong. Let's roll that video. Isn't that great? Today I'm going to be talking about impacts. How the work we do at this college has impacts far beyond the boundaries of our two campuses. One is the economy. And we all know the economy is changing rapidly. It's more competitive, it's more technology driven than ever before. More workers need to be trained for today's high demand jobs. Businesses need more skilled and more educated employees than our pipelines are producing. Our young people need education and training beyond high school to ensure that they succeed. When they complete their education and training, the impacts are tremendous. This academic year marks LBCC's 90th anniversary. The college held its first classes in 1927 on the campus of what is now Wilson High School. In those 90 years, LBCC has transformed countless lives for the better. We've educated generations of families in our community. We've welcomed many traditional students, those aged 18 or 19, or out of high school, probably supported to some degree by their parents. We all recognize that student, right? But today, we are also serving large numbers of students who do not fit that category. Students with children, students experiencing homelessness, students working full time while taking a full load of classes, students with physical and mental health issues, students coming out of foster care or the prison system. Let me give you an example. Eugene Sills attended LBCC in the 1960s and made a name for himself as a Viking football linebacker. His life took some challenging twists and turns, including time spent in prison. He has faced health issues related to diabetes. But guess what? At LBCC, 
At age 74, he returns to continue his education and give back to the community with a degree in human services. Eugene's here with us today. Can you please stand? Eugene, thank you. Eugene reminds us that no matter where we find ourselves, education is the path to a better life, and it is never too late, never too late to make an impact. I always say that commencement is my favorite day of the year. I mean it. Watching graduates come up to collect their diplomas, seeing their smiling faces and their cheering families. These are some of my best moments. There were a lot of them in 2017. Our students earned nearly 1,700 associate degrees. That included 800 associate degrees for transfer, among the highest in California. We awarded more than 360 certificates of achievement. About 1,300 students earned enough credits to transfer. Behind each one of those numbers is a story of hard work and perseverance for our students to finish, get across that finish line and wear that cap and gown. And when I think of the positive impacts that an LBCC education has on our graduates, their families, their children, it brings tears to my eyes. Let's hear it for our recent graduates. None of these impacts would be possible without the support of our community. Thanks to your support, we've been able to make incredible strides forward with construction. LBCC's voter approved bonds in 2002 and 2008 helped us to start transforming our campuses. The 2016 Measure LB will give us the ability to finish the job. Last year, we celebrated the opening of a new building at the Pacific Coast Campus, a home for our electrical program and senior studies center. We kicked off the renovation of one of our oldest buildings, Building P home to our journalism and language arts programs. The renovation of our science labs are on track to be completed. These maps behind me are going to show you the before and after. The improvements started about 15 years ago with the 2002 bond. Exciting, huh? By 2041, our campus will have been entirely transformed with state-of-the-art learning facilities to prepare our students for the careers of today and tomorrow. One of those high-demand careers is the culinary arts. And if you haven't heard, LBCC has the best student culinary facilities of any institution in Southern California. And this includes a student-run restaurant. If you haven't been to the bistro, make your reservation soon. Now, I'd like to share a short video featuring one of our culinary arts students. I feel the pride in Long Beach very welcoming. I felt like I belonged here. Being in the culinary department, you will garner support not only from the students, but from your instructor too. I find that a lot of the students have so much ambition and so much drive. Being able to work together, everybody is strong, and building those relationships, that's what I thrive on here. When we stand together, there's nothing that you can't rise above. In most areas, we want to make a bigger impact. But when it comes to the environment, the opposite is true. We want to reduce our impact. As we build the campus of the future, we are doing it sustainably. Yeah. 
In recent years, we've added solar panels, recycled water systems, and other technologies to reduce our environmental footprint. Last year, we were the first community college to put mobile solar stations into our energy portfolio. We partnered with DC Solar on the project, which is reducing our energy use, cutting pollution, and promoting the use of clean energy vehicles. I'm proud that these efforts were recognized by Green Education Incorporated, which named LBCC the Green School of the Year for 2017. While LBCC must be sustainable, it must also be as safe as possible, yes? Last year, we continued to add more security features. The highlight was the installation of hundreds of cameras, video cameras in public throughout both campuses to increase safety. We've also added building numbers to the rooftops to assist helicopter crews in the event of an air rescue. Once again, I want to thank the voters for our district, for your generous support of our students. This bond money is an investment, and I assure you that that investment will pay off with a stronger economy, a better educated workforce, and even greater cities of Long Beach, Lakewood, Avalon, and Signal Hill. One place that I really see LBCC making an impact is through our economic and workforce development programs. LBCC is the headquarters for the LA Regional Small Business Development Center Network. Last year, this network alone helped start more than 325 local businesses. That's nearly one business a day, amazing. In addition, the SBDC helped create 1,400 new local jobs, Mr. Mayor, advised 4,100 clients, and helped small businesses access more than $142 million in growth capital, the highest number to date. <laughs> 2017 was also a great year for Viking athletics. LBCC earned one state title, six conference championships, four MVP awards, nine appearances in statewide finals, and five Viking coaches earned Coach of the Year awards. Chris Oding in women's water polo, David Casa in men's water polo, Misty May Trainer in women's volleyball, Jonathan Charette in men's volleyball, and Casey Crook in baseball. Let's give them a round of applause. I always knew that LBCC had exemplary faculty. When I got here, I got to see it for myself. Let me share a few highlights from our faculty accomplishments of 2017. Learning and Academic Resources instructor Scott Bruckner's study skills videos hit four million views on YouTube. Our astronomy department hosted popular planetarium nights events for fall for students and the community that drew standing room only crowds. Our robotics program led by Scott Frazier hosted an international robotics competition this June. LBCC's counselors were recognized with a prestigious Tele Award for a video they made promoting counseling services. Under the leadership of journalism professor Pat McKeon, the Viking News won 14 state awards, including general excellence. Talk about making an impact. Let's have a round of applause for our faculty. I 
would love to show off all the incredible academic departments and brag about them, but I would be here all day and I just don't have time. So here's a quick video of our computer science program. Let's roll the video. Computer programming and computer science is as important as basic reading and writing. I think it's a valuable skill to have, so anybody that's watching this and want to learn a very valuable skill that's going to be used later on in life, you should go for it. It's worth it. The instructors and learning environment that I feel is more conductive to learning a trade and getting into a particular career field that I'm interested in. Students can choose from a variety of courses including C++, C Sharp, Java, data structures, discrete structures, among many other courses. After some time, we'll look back and we'll think why it took us so long to figure that out. Long Beach City College has fun instructors. So come on, join us. How about a hand for our computer science department? <laughs> Have you ever heard the saying that what got you here is not going to get you there? It's true of LBCC. We're a great institution with an amazing 90-year history, but we have to step up our game. We know this, and we embrace it. We have to evolve to meet the changing needs of our economy, our businesses, and our diverse student populations. Fortunately, we have a roadmap, the college's strategic plan. The strategic plan outlines our goals and strategies through 2022. These reforms will help our students get more of the classes they need, reduce the time to graduation, remove some of the unnecessary barriers that cause them to drop out. 2022 may seem like a long time away, but it's not. We can't wait because our students need us today. When I first got here in May, my first goal was to listen. I heard what our faculty and staff and other stakeholder groups had to say about the direction of the college. Now, I'm stepping on the gas. <laughs> Here are our priorities for the coming year. Increasing recruitment efforts to boost enrollment and communicate the value of a college education to everyone in our community moving registration dates earlier so that we can be more competitive with our neighboring community colleges, supporting and expanding accelerated learning so students can succeed in English and math more quickly, improving class scheduling so that students can get the courses they need when they need them, finding and removing barriers to improve student retention and completion, better management of our call center to provide more direct customer service for current and potential students, improving our enrollment, retention, registration, and admissions processes known as matriculation, adding services and features to our student success centers, evaluating and improving our participatory governance system to ensure that all stakeholder voices are heard. And for the first time, a social and emotional wellness team to explore best practices to provide additional supports and services. I'd like to take a moment talking about one critical reform we are undertaking called Guided Pathways. Guided Pathways really in illustrates the differences between the traditional community college and the innovative community college. The traditional model is often called the cafeteria formula. Students had a wide selection of classes but very little guidance. What to take, when to take it, and in what order. Guided Pathways provide students with strong roadmaps for their majors. Guided Pathways gives students clear direction and focus, 
resulting in higher success rates, greater persistence, and higher graduation rates. These reforms aren't just happening in the classroom. To ensure that our students succeed, we need to provide the right kind of supports. We've launched a new mobile-friendly website that was designed for students with lots of input from students. We have a new student technology help desk to assist the students with all the computer and digital resources available to them. But technology is just part of the solution. Sometimes what's needed is a friendly face and someone to talk to. So we've designed new welcome centers at both campuses. The welcome centers are just one of the many great ideas coming out of our counseling department. We've started a foster youth center for our students who were in the foster care system, as well as a support network for formerly incarcerated students. We've expanded lactation rooms, mother's rooms, to better support employees with nursing babies. We are launching a more comprehensive student health and wellness center that includes resources for students facing homelessness and food insecurity. The wellness center includes mental health resources which we recognize is the key in keeping so many students on track in their studies. We're increasing opportunities for students to get involved with programs like Honors, Umoja, Puente, and student clubs where they can become more engaged in campus and academic life. And as President Kellogg said, we are working to reduce the cost of education we're working aggressively to pursue and embrace free and online education resources so that students don't have to purchase as many expensive textbooks. We've expanded our veterans, it's okay, you can clap. We've expanded our veterans transition program to better assist our returning veterans can I please ask for all the veterans in the audience to stand and please be recognized. Thank you for your service. We are increasing the number of counselors so that students can have more guidance and direction. And speaking of counselors, I'd like to give a shout out to our counseling department for the great work they're doing on the front lines with our students. How about a shout out? I am very pleased that we have two new labor agreements with two of our employee unions so that ongoing negotiations will not distract us from our core mission. I think you'll agree, our mission has never been more critical. Now more than ever, education is the key. Crime, racism, class and wealth inequality, Homelessness, these are problems that education can and does solve. We welcome diversity rather than attack it. We strengthen the middle class rather than weaken it. You ready? We tear down walls rather than build them. We must do our part. Right now, you're probably thinking, how can I make an impact? How can I do more to support LBCC? 
I'm going to tell you. On your chairs, you're going to see a card with check boxes. Please consider checking one of the boxes as appropriate. If you can donate today to our foundation, thank you. That's great. If you can offer a student an internship, wonderful. If you can give one of our graduates a full-time job, even better. And if you don't know, that's fine. Give us your name and number. We're going to follow up with you and look for ways that we can explore to partner together. If you haven't taken a class at LBCC, there has never been a better time to enroll. Classes start Monday. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for giving back to your community. And thank you for making an impact. Go Vikings! Yeah.